The staff at Game Trailers is generally optimistic. We try to search for silver linings whenever possible, but while measuring our anticipation for the year ahead, we inevitably come across games that have the potential to fall short of our expectations. In other words, they might suck. We're happy that some of our picks from last year's list turned out alright, and we're hoping to be wrong on all 10 counts here, but we're still going to approach these games with caution. We're excited for the return of the Star Fox team, even Slippy, but we're skeptical as well. The series has spent a long time in the hangar, and there hasn't been a truly great Star Fox game since the N64. With such an anticipated comeback, we were a bit let down by the visuals shown at E3, and our team is split on the two-screen control system. With the extra time given to tweak the game, we're hoping that this will be the worthy successor we've been waiting for, but it could easily turn out to be a clunky attempt to justify the Wii U's gamepad. Remedy Entertainment has made games we love, like Max Payne and Alan Wake, although they often take a terribly long time to finish them. We're looking forward to Quantum Break, but we also have concerns about some of the announced features. The in-game live-action show that ties the plot bits together could be a refreshing method of storytelling, or it could ruin the momentum and make the character models look fake by comparison. Other anomalies, like multiple delays and the strange actor swapping with the game's original cast, have us cautiously counting the seconds to its release. Over the course of 2015, Mighty No. 9 has transformed from an underdog we're all rooting for into something we're struggling to find any hope for. The game's original release date was April of last year, and after two poorly communicated delays, it doesn't seem to have improved, which is to say, it looks like a misguided fan project developed for the Nintendo DS. What was meant to be the chosen one who would carry the torch from Mega Man's dead hands has become this twisted shadow, stinking of overbearing voice acting, unwanted combo streaks, and premature movie deals. Get them out first, but don't jeopardize the mission. We're going in on your heels. The field break ends here. We've done the whole viral outbreak thing before, and we've certainly seen New York torn to shreds by every kind of apocalypse. It's the desperate, dangerous world left behind in the division that has us intrigued, but there's still so much left to see. To win back the Big Apple, we'll need to scavenge for better gear, clear the streets of homicidal gangs, and forge uneasy alliances. If there's only a few ways to do this, and only a handful of locations to explore, then the snowy rubble of Manhattan could get really old, really quick. Eye-catching interiors and a riveting story could go a long way in alleviating this, but what we've seen so far only strikes one or two notes. We're still washing the bitter taste out of our mouths from Hitman Absolution. The action-oriented focus took center stage, resulting in a limited scope for assassination possibilities. The newest entry promises to bring back beautiful assassinations, but IDOS hasn't done a great job of showing us how. The bizarre episodic structure is designed to encourage replaying missions, which sounds tedious. Part of what made Blood Money so special was going from one great location to the next, trying to analyze each location on the fly for the best possible hit. Endlessly replaying stages for a better score sounds like it could cheapen individual assassinations and make them less meaningful. Since its announcement in 2013, we've seen a lot of No Man's Sky. The thought of wandering around a procedurally generated universe is an enticing one, and our minds continue to run wild with the possibilities. Yet despite all we've seen and heard, No Man's Sky is still a vague promise. There's absolutely nothing wrong with making a game purely about the joys of discovery, but if the drive to venture forth isn't present, the novelty fades quickly. No Man's Sky invites plenty of curiosity, but has yet to instill confidence in its ambitious ideas. We know that Star Citizen has undergone an unusual development process, and there's plenty of scandal surrounding how much money Cloud Imperium has made and what they've spent it on. What we don't know is if the game itself is actually fun to play. The scale of the project is mesmerizing, watching players exit a spaceship, float through space, enter another spaceship, and fly it back home makes our hearts flutter. But we can't be the only ones thinking that despite its massive budget, the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay of Star Citizen could be very dull and repetitive. Hopefully its budget has been well spent, but until we know for sure, we're keeping our shields up.
Ubisoft made a few efforts to revitalize long-running franchises over the years, with varying results. Ghost Recon will see a similar update in 2016 with Wildlands. There's a lot about Wildlands that seems promising, such as a wide variety of ways to complete objectives and plenty of available high-tech weaponry. From what we've seen so far, however, Wildlands hasn't alleviated all of our concerns. Many open-world Ubisoft games have a homogenous feel, where they're largely about filling up various bars by completing mundane objectives, and we're worried Wildlands will take a similar approach. Even more troubling, it seems like the game will deal with serious issues like drug cartels with empty machismo, at least if the cheesy and grating reveal trailer is any indication. Got eyes on White Hat. When Mafia 3's beautiful cinematic trailer first debuted, we were intrigued by the setting and protagonist. Our hype quickly dissipated with the first gameplay reveal that showcased Saints Row-style gameplay, complete with more exploding vehicles than a twisted metal trailer. Mafia is a series that benefits from being grounded and realistic, and the latest entry seems to throw away everything that makes the series special in favor of generic cover-based mechanics. The series' creator has moved on to the upcoming Kingdom Come Deliverance, and development is in the hands of a newly formed studio, Hangar 13. We're even more nervous about Hayden Blackman stepping up to direct, as his previous credits include Star Wars The Force Unleashed, which speaks for itself. At this point, we're starting to feel bad for Battleborn. It's like the kid that everyone makes fun of at school. You want to be nice, so you go over to their house to formulate your own opinion, and you start to understand why nobody likes this kid. Given the opportunity to address criticisms and flat-out disinterest in 2015, Gearbox has doubled down on their insistence that we all want to be awesome badasses with ridiculous character models designed for optimal badass awesomeness. At PSX, they added a penguin in a mech suit named Toby to the roster, but Toby represents what a lot of people don't like about Battleborn. Attitude is the number one theme we've seen coming from Gearbox when advertising this game, and there's only so much of that that we can take. Looking forward to the promise of 2016's shimmering, glorious lineup, we're left shivering at the thought of spending hundreds of hours in this world of jokes that may never make us laugh. We recently got to try out the new plants and zombies coming to Garden Warfare 2 this year in our first preview of the zany sequel. And we gathered to sort out the week's biggest headlines in another informal and informative episode of GT Time. We'll see you next week for another GT Countdown.